the same for the cross X. Uh, so as soon as you're done speaking, we'll applaud, and then the cross examination will begin. During Brazil's Petrobras scandal, it was revealed that gas giant Petrobras in Brazil had been overcharging contracts and giving kickbacks to politicians and corrupt executives. Now, throughout the investigation, many executives and politicians went to jail or were fined. But one who escaped was the person who oversaw it all, Dilma Rousseff, the leader of Brazil. Now, during this investigation, many people questioned her credibility. But she was never actually uh, she was never actually sent to jail or fined. Now, this is, is a very problematic for Brazil, which is facing a very problematic economy at this point. In fact, according to the Washington Post, published December 18, 2015, Brazil's inflation has been about 10.5% for years now, and is expected to increase without, a, uh, uh, without an amped up economy. And given that Brazil's economy will likely struggle unless Rousseff makes some tough decisions, we must ask today's question. President Rousseff claims the plan to jumpstart the Brazilian economy won't fuel already high inflation. Should we believe her? The answer to this question is no, because Brazil only has painful options, and Rousseff only wants painless answers. Three key reasons. First, because she won't be able to tackle pensions. Second, because she won't open up Brazil to necessary global competition. And finally, because there's no way for her to deal with debt without raising inflation. So first, let's see how she won't tackle pensions. Now, Rousseff is very unlikely to go after pensions in her country because she is the one who put them there and made them so important in the economy. In fact, according to the Christian Science Monitor, published December 18, 2015, during her first term as president, Rousseff spent enormously on pensions. At the time, they were 4% of the gross domestic product. Now, they're 12% of the gross domestic product, which explains why, according to the aforementioned article, the average retirement age in Brazil is between 50 to 55 years of age. Not only are these workers retiring early and not contributing to the economy, they also have to be paid for. The retirement has to be paid for by the Brazilian government, which severely slows down their economy. In order to jumpstart it, Rousseff would have to go after these uh, pensions in order to cut spending and try to increase productivity within Brazil. But it would be very difficult and political suicide for her to even attempt it. In fact, according to The Economist, published December 10, 2015, right now, Brit uh, the Congress of Brazil is very dysfunctional and fragmented. They think of it as the United States Congress, just with more parties involved. Now, because of that, it's very difficult for Rousseff to push through these measures. And it would be severely unpopular with Brazilian voters, who have come to expect their pensions for their retirement. If Rousseff went out of these pensions, it would be very difficult for her to keep office or for her to work with not only her opposition, but her own party. And it is unlikely she will make this painful choice in order to improve the Brazilian economy. But another reason why Rousseff will not be able to amp up the Brazilian economy without resulting in inflation is because she will not go and uh, open up necessary global competition for Brazil. Now, Brazil is desperately in need of global competition. And sure, we don't like global competition because of China and how jobs are sometimes laid off or outsourced. But in some cases, it encourages innovation and generally increases competition and, uh, and productivity within the nations that compete globally. Now, Brazil has a problem in that area. According to the Associated Press, published December 18, 2015, Brazil has shielded a lot of its firms from global competition through measures such as tariffs and other barriers to global competition. Now, this makes domestic the economy very good because it's easy to hire people. There's not a lot of competition for the jobs there. It's easy for the uh, materials made by domestic businesses to be sold within Brazil. But unfortunately, for the long term, it hurts productivity. And there's a lot of other measures growing to in productivity within Brazil. In fact, according to NPR, aired on December 22, 2015, Brazil has one of the least effective manufacturing sectors because to comply with the tax code in Brazil, on average, takes about 1,156 hours as opposed to the 396 hours with regular and average Latin American countries. Now, in order for Rousseff to jumpstart the economy in Brazil, she would have to go after these measures in an attempt to reform how the businesses within Brazil are being protected in order to increase innovation and general productivity within the manufacturing sector. But in doing so, it would again be very unpopular among voters. And Rousseff isn't known to be a president to make these hard choices with voters in place. In fact, the very object of the government is to do what the people want. And right now, the people of Brazil are happy with the jobs they have. Taking this action would surely lay off a lot of Brazilian workers, as now the global competition would come in and it would be very inefficient for these firms to keep having this many workers in place. 
Obviously, Rousseff will not uh, risk this and will not take this necessary approach to revamp the Brazilian economy because she does not want to lay out this many Brazilian workers and ultimately hurt her political future. But perhaps the best reason for why Rousseff cannot deal with the German, uh, Brazilian economy and not raise inflation is because she can't deal with the debt without increasing inflation. Now, Brazilian debt is a very big problem right now. In fact, according to NPR, at February 2nd, 2016, uh, debt within Brazil is about 70% of its gross domestic product. Now that's not like Greece standards, but it's still pretty big. And the important thing here is it's not marketable. In fact, according to The Economist, published January 2nd, 2016, they have junk status bonds. Essentially, in order to market its debt to other countries, in order to put off selling it, they have to charge a very large interest rate. It's not like the United States, where we can charge a very small interest rate to market our debt. Thus, they have to either charge a very high interest rate and keep having more debt, or they have to pay it off. And they can't do that with an economy that's shrinking by 3% every year, so they're gonna have to print more money, resulting in inflation. If they default on it, they're going to have to raise inflation because their economy is going to suffer drastically as a result, with very few countries wanting to ever borrow or loan the money again with a terrible credit rating if they ever default on this debt. Ultimately, Rousseff has few options here for dealing with the debt, and all of the options that she does have will result in inflation. She cannot hope to jumpstart the Brazil economy by keeping, by, to keep having all this debt and try to market it through these terrible interest rates. Ultimately, she will have to pay this debt off somehow, and if she prints more money to do it, it will largely result in inflation, fueling Brazil's already high inflation rate. So, in returning to today's quote, uh, question, President Rousseff claims to plan to jumpstart the Brazilian economy won't fuel already high inflation. Should we believe her? The answer to this question is no, because Brazil only has painful choices, and Rousseff wants painless answers. Now, when we saw this because she won't tackle pensions, she won't open up necessary global competition, and she won't be able to tackle debt without uh, raising inflation. Now, when we look at the Petrobras scandal, she was able to save face by not being convicted of those crimes. But ultimately, she has many more hard choices to discover throughout her presidency. And if she has any choice of trying to jumpstart Brazil's economy, she'll have to make some hard decisions. But she likely won't make them, and Brazil's economy will remain slow. mentioned a scandal with uh, Rousseff and everything that happened there. Uh, I know you said that she didn't face any fines or jail time. Have there been any, has there been any like blowback for her like politically? Certainly. Uh, yeah, domestically her approval ratings took a hit ultimately because people didn't buy a lot of the argument she was making that she wasn't involved. Now there's a possibility she wasn't involved, but ultimately it's very difficult to swallow that because of her oversight of so many people who were involved in the scandal. So there was some blowback. Okay. Uh, and then my other question is, you talked about uh, why she won't open up to global competition. If she were to open it up to global competition, what do you think the consequences would be of that? They, they wouldn't be, for the short term it would certainly be painful, but for the long term it's what's necessary to revamp the economy. Ultimately there would be layoffs, there would be uh, some problems with now you have you know, uh, more cheap uh, goods to come in from other countries, and ultimately they would lose jobs there. But generally, the firms that still remain would uh, see overall increase in productivity, and it would allow Brazil to be more competitive in the long term. And then my last question is, uh, could you elaborate a little bit more on like, why you think Rousseff can't tackle the debt head on? And certainly, certainly. Yes. Um, so for like, all of these issues, it's not just Rousseff. There's also just a tendency that very few presidents want to do anything unpopular with voters. Um, and because of that, there are you know, measures in place so that people will have representation and voice that will block these kind of things. And these actions, especially the debt, are uh, very unpopular within Brazil. Uh, tackling the debt in order to revamp the economy would soon, uh, certainly lead to inflation, and it's probably the most painless route, but that's also what would most likely result in inflation, which would in turn uh, fuel the high inflation rates. Awesome. Okay, that's all I have. Thanks.